Bonjour! <laughs> Hello, everyone! <laughs> I mean, that's the only French I know, I think. So, um, yeah, I uh, hope you're all um, having a wonderful weekend. And in the UK, it's actually um, Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday. So, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and the dads who are also mothers and anyone in your life who's also uh, you look up to as your mom. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Um, yeah, so it's, it is Sunday once again. It's, uh, oh, I just saw it like it's one minute to two in the UK or nearly two o'clock. So, it's 10 o'clock in Manila. And 3 p.m. in Paris, where my guest is actually coming to us live from. Um, so, which I'm really, really excited about because I saw them play at the Talleyrand in Manchester last year. And I thought, oh my God, they're so amazing. So, I've got to have her on the show. And luckily, she said yes. So, um, my dear friends, uh, please welcome, coming to us live from Paris, Erica Ashlison. Yay! <laughs> hello, Erica. <laughs> Hello, hello. Sava, is that how you say it? Sava? Yeah, I don't know if I want to say. Oh, he'll go. Uh, yeah, so um, how are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm very good. I've been very busy lately um, with band stuff and making lots of artwork because we have a. You're mentioning how you saw a special friend back in September. We were on a little. Yeah, that's right, yeah. On a little UK tour, and we have a tour coming up in April, where we're going to be playing a lot of concerts in Germany. I know there's one in Czech Republic and a city in like the east coast of France called Strasbourg. Yeah. So I've been making uh, T-shirts, been making stickers. I've oh, yeah. been yeah, yeah. I've been trying to practice a lot too. We have a we have a concert next week. Very busy life. Very, very busy. I don't know how I'm, how I'm doing it all. <laughs> <laughs> Any UK dates? Ah, so this is good. Yeah, we have um, we have a new booker who is currently organizing a UK tour in September again. And it's going to oh, be okay. more extensive because last time when we were there in September, we were opening for Swansea Sound. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, the members of Skepwax, which is the label that released our last album, like co-released yeah. our last album. And so this time we're coming back uh, just on our own. And I uh, think that we have maybe two weeks, in like end oh, of okay. September, early October. And I just saw today that I got an email saying that we have a gig in Glasgow confirmed, which I'm so excited about because we didn't go to last time. There's so many cities we didn't go to last time. And, yeah. yeah, so this is going to be like a headlining tour. So you're the ones headlining, and then we've got to. I, honestly, I think so. I, I think we'll be playing with other bands, but. With uh, other bands, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I hope we're playing with some local bands because we're still not like, <laughs> very, we're not like mega well known. So uh, I hope we'll be playing with other people. All right. Well, we, we look forward to that one. But, anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, welcome to um, Ask the Drummer. Uh, episode 117 is all about you, Erica Ashleson. Um, I pronounced I pronounced your last name right. Ashleson. Ashleson, yeah. Ashleson, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, where are the Ashlesons from? I know you're like you're American, right, or Japanese American? Oh no. So no. <laughs> <laughs> so I am born and raised in Minnesota from the US and my mom is a Vietnamese immigrant and my dad oh, okay. is yeah and my dad is American with German and Danish heritage but from multiple generations and so I left when I was 20 as an exchange student and I came to France in the south of France where I was studying yeah. and then I just didn't want to go back and I've been here <laughs> for 11 years now and I have, oh, really? I have like I'm a French citizen. I have my my cat, <laughs> my bands. Yeah, uh, yeah. So are you um, dual? Are you, are you American French or? or I have dual citizenship now. Yeah, dual yeah. citizenship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but when you were growing up, so the first twenty years of your life was yeah. sort of like spent in America. So, uh, what was Minnesota like when you were sort of like growing up? <laughs> it's just funny because I was like reflecting on this too of like how random my life ended up being and like how I ended up being here. I think it's just that 
uh, growing up in the Midwest, I mean, my dad was a musician, but like very, uh, like they didn't really play, like they were never successful, you know, with his bands, but my dad was a guitarist. He was listening to a lot of like dad rock, like, you know, ACDC, like, <laughs> which is not what I was listening to, but I think that like, you know, he used to have band practices and I would go as a little kid, like run around and like playing with the dogs. Um, yeah. And I think that like quite young, um, I've always been interested in playing music. And I used to go to a lot of concerts as a teenager, like even as quite a young teenager, I remember being like 13, 14, going to yeah. venues in downtown Minneapolis and seeing bands, trying to be in like mosh pits, thinking I was really cool as a little like 13, 14 year old. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I don't know, I think it's just at some point, I think I had really big dreams and aspirations of wanting to see the world and, you know, just being curious of uh, going elsewhere. And I don't know, as a, when I was in university, I was actually studying Spanish and I went to Costa Rica uh, for this tropical horticulture class. And I was really sure at that time I would have been, like, I would have spent time yeah. studying there. But then, I don't know, there's this part of me that really wanted to to come see Europe. And so, I don't know, I just kind of randomly decided that, you know, it could be cool to be based in France. And this way it would be kind of like the portal to go to like other countries. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm here, I have had my first musical experience here. Like all of the terminology of, you know, even just like drum stuff, I love French. And like yeah. sometimes like when I've had to translate are like tech writer to English. Sometimes I'm like, I don't even know how to say these words in English because it's like I've learned a lot of that since I've been here, you know? Yeah, 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 in French. Well, Aiden said that sound and picture are excellent. So that's really good. Aiden is my tech support. So when he says mm -hmm. that, that, that means it's, you know, it, it's it's good. So uh, we're doing okay. So um so you started off early because your dad's um is a musician. So yeah. you're also a multi-instrumentalist because even your profile photo on Facebook, it's yeah. not a drummer, it's not like a guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> so what which instrument did you start uh, learning Ooh, first? Okay. Well, have you always been sort of like you know like drawn to whatever? I think, I think like, like when you're in the American school system, at least the way it was when I was in school, is when you're quite young, you have to learn to play uh, like really basic piano. <laughs> and then oh. I learned, and then I, so that was probably my first instrument. And then like the little flute recorder. And I actually, oh, yeah, 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 when yeah. I was in elementary school, I was playing like regular flute in like band, was what we called yeah. it, band. Um, so I used to play the flute for maybe two years uh, in elementary school. <laughs> in like junior high I think and so I don't know if that really counts but I, <laughs> so basically when I was here um, I always wanted to sing in a band but I think I didn't feel comfortable enough just kind of being in a band not doing anything with my hands so drums were the first instrument that I decided that if oh. I'm gonna have a real band experience it's gonna be with drums and me singing and so this is how we started Special Friend. And I think that after a while, uh, I don't know, you just kind of, you know, get curious about wanting to try other things. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Cause you know, it's, it's, I wanted to try composing music too. And I don't know, guitar has always been something that it hasn't been as easy for me, I guess. Cause you know, you have to learn all like, the chords and I don't know, maybe I have a bad memory for it. But uh, so I decided that, you know, okay, I'm gonna try learning bass. So I started this other band called Dog Park, maybe like a year and a half ago or so. I don't know. And so I'm playing bass in that band, and but I'm also playing drums in that band. And then it finally came to the point where like everybody's a multi instrumentalist in this band. So it's kind of became our thing where between each song we're kind of rotating. So I'll be like on the drums and on the bass and then on the guitar and then on the keyboards and what we're yeah. vocalists. And it's I know it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's all like a certain ratio because. Uh... I don't know if you know a band called a certain ratio from Manchester. They do that. They actually yeah. switch so like instruments and things. But um um wanting to become a singer and doing something as so well, isn't it difficult to so, like play the drums and then because you're concentrating on it and then sing as well? Because I mean there aren't really that many so like singer yeah. drummers on this. 
You know, this is funny because this is something that I talk about often with other people is that it's a comment that I really get a lot because special friend is really like when I'm singing on the drums, a lot of the times I'm being lead or we're yeah. both singing at the same time. And it's, you know, because like sometimes you see people who are kind of doing backup vocals occasionally, but uh, it's kind of our like particularity with special friend is really being this like, you know, dual vocalists all the time and a lot of people will ask me all the time like oh well, how do you do it how do you sing and drum <laughs> um i kind of you know the thing is like ha from having tried to play bass and sing which i actually find more difficult i think the thing is when you're drumming like your body kind of goes into autopilot and like you kind of don't really think about what you're doing and actually think it makes singing easier in a way um oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's how i see it is because it's like yeah. thinking, you're, you're doing something very repetitive you know, and like also maybe it's my drumming style too, which is quite simple. I'm not doing a bunch of like crazy fills all the time. Yeah. yeah. But like the whole point is just trying to like keep a rhythm quite simple going and then try to not think too much about what I'm doing. And yeah, I think it allows the singing to come up, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Because well, sometimes like when I go to a gig and I see a drummer and it's all like really concentrating yeah. on what he's doing or they, she's doing, but it's like, having to sing as well <laughs> and concentrating on the drumming yeah. it just sort of like seems a bit really you know, harder for me than playing the guitar and singing yeah. it's like, it's like maybe keyboards and singing mm. but for you it's it's easier to sort of like yeah, play I, the drums and I think sing. It's it was it, time. yeah i think it's a bit more intuitive in a sense, whereas, like I said, like, for me, like if you saw a concert, probably I don't know if you noticed. I, whenever I play, usually my eyes are closed all the time because yeah, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm really concentrating. And usually, the only time my eyes open is if I like mess up or if, like my guitars mess up, and we like look at each other. <laughs> um, yeah, it's fantastic actually, because it's like, how can you sort of, like make sure that you're hitting the right? You know, well, that's the right. So, like, when you, your eyes are closed. <laughs> But I mean, like, because, you know, you're sitting there and there, there are not too many elements to it, you know, it's like, for me, I feel like a guitar or even bass is a bit more intimidating because it's like you have multiple strings, you have lots of, you know, oh, different yeah. places. And the thing is, that if, you know, you mess up the wrong chord, you play the wrong note, like, it's really flagrant, whereas, like, the drums, I, I mean, I kind of know where everything's at, so I, you know, I close oh. my eyes, I'm just kind of, you know, like, intuitively letting my body do its thing, and then that's, yeah, yeah. I feel like the, the singing is... A lot easier, I guess. So and you're more, yeah. yeah. So you're more comfortable playing the drums than any of the others, or like instruments that you know how to play. I think since it's the one that I've been playing longest, it's the one that I feel most yeah comfortable, I guess. But I yeah. do really, really like playing bass. I think it's it's nice being able to compose melodies, and I feel very powerful to you know being amplified. And I don't know, it's a different. <laughs> A different feeling it's a different experience and but i love yeah. i love love playing everything yeah so did you when when you decide that you're gonna play drums uh did you have any proper drumming lessons or did you just sort of like uh teach yeah. yourself how to do it yeah and this is kind of what i like i love the sort of story of how this band came together because really initially i think because i think my f my first kind of audition i did i had this uh, this band that was looking for a singer and I figured, okay, maybe I'll just, you know, go in and try to sing, but I was just too afraid to, <laughs> to sing in front of them. And so, uh, I don't know, I was, I was really shy at the time and I figured, okay, I need, to, I need to learn an instrument to kind of hide behind. And so, I don't know, I figured that, you know, I know a lot of musicians here in Paris and a lot of them are very talented uh, guitarists, composers. And I figured if I can learn the drums, I can do, I could start quickly doing something simple, but playing with people who are maybe a bit more skilled. And so initially, I don't know, I, I, I met this friend of mine here who uh, ha, who plays in another band and he had a practice studio and I was just saying that I was looking for a place where I could go kind of, you know, you know, hit around, yeah, yeah. see if, is this something that I'm good at? Is this something that I enjoy doing? And so I, he gave me access to a studio. He came just to accompany me playing the guitar, not necessarily in the optic of starting a band, but I think that just initially, you know, I was playing very simple, like, you know, boom, doom, da, dum, 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 dum. Yeah. And he was like composing these little kind of sad 
melodies on top of it. And immediately, I was like, I actually really love this. Like, maybe we should, maybe we should be a band. <laughs> so a lot of my learning experience has really been like uh, immediate, just you know, trying to compose, I guess. And yeah, yeah, yeah. so I didn't, I didn't initially have lessons. I think then at some point though, because since I didn't really know where to start. Uh, I would occasionally ask some drummer friends if they could kind of show me some things, you know, uh, like I'd be like, how do I do like a like a basic crowd beat, you know, and then I would take that one thing that maybe a friend of mine would teach me and it would immediately go into a special friend song because that's like, that's all I had. <laughs> um, yeah, so is this, um, how do you pronounce it, like, Guillaume? Guillaume, Guillaume, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Guillaume, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's where, how you met, it's all like, just going to a practice studio and yeah. he was there or no i think i mean we went because i mean there's a really how do you say it? there's like this very nice <laughs> like kind of indie music scene in paris and like when i arrived here um yeah, yeah. i was what was i doing i was just going to a lot of concerts and like i think i was at this gig where i met this uh, american bass player who plays in a band with guillaume and so I think that, I don't know, that's probably at the some, at one point when I was probably saying that I was looking, you know, I was wanting to learn how to play an instrument. I was looking for a place to practice. And yeah. so they had this practice studio that they shared with a lot of bands in Montreuil, which is in the suburbs of Paris. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. He was, I think that he, you know, cause he was playing guitar in this other band. And, you know, it was like the classic, Thing where you know there's two guitars bass player drummer and i think that yeah. he was interested in the idea too of maybe well actually i don't know if he wanted to like start a band immediately i think he was just i don't know i don't know how it happened but it was random it was like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. before you moved to paris um because you mentioned before that you were in sort like a little band when you were in primary school or <laughs> grade school or whatever yeah. did you have any other sort like band before that before leaving america were you in a in 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 the band? Not you know when you were a teenager. Yeah. No, like you said, my first band was when I was playing the flute. We called it. And then that's all. That's all you. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, and the thing is, I think I always wanted to be in a band because I really, I you know, it's just like something you know that just like a dream, but I didn't know where yeah. to. Sing. I didn't play anything, and like I, I always like to sing and like sing long songs, but. I didn't really even understand at that time like how to how to even compose music like I yeah didn't, didn't click yet you know and so i feel like i'm kind of an example of like a late starter where i don't know it probably wasn't until i i think i started maybe i was 25 with special friend yeah yeah, yeah. and uh no so special friend was my first band and now i'm in four bands <laughs> oh right <laughs> current like they're all sort of like playing yeah they're like cool I'm, yeah which is kind of funny yeah i'm currently in like four different projects now mostly yeah, oh, right. uh still drumming but also bass and yeah 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 um how did the name special friend so uh, like come about where did that come from <laughs> i think uh so like i said when we first started playing it wasn't really serious and I think we were really expecting to be a band but then we had I don't know within four songs or within four months we had maybe six songs composed and we were asked if like we wanted to open for some I can't remember which band it was we were asked if we wanted to play a gig and we're like okay well we need a band name and I don't know at the time uh yeah. it, we didn't have anything recorded and it was I don't know why there's this internet YouTube video of this little kid who sings this song where he's like uh, I'm gonna sing a song just for you because you're my special friend. And then he starts singing this really oh. creepy, creepy, weird song. And it was kind of like a troll because I was thinking that if people see, okay, what is special friend? I'm gonna go on YouTube and try to find their music that they would fall on that video. You know, <laughs> kind of a joke. <laughs> I kind of regret it too because I don't think it's a good band name, but now it's too late to change. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one of those sort like, you know, when because i've got you know i've got one daughter and he, she, i remember i saw like uh when she was in high school that they you know share so like creepy videos is it oh, one yeah. of those no it's it's definitely one of those weird weird youtube videos that like you just kind of laugh at and i don't know <laughs> <Stupid>. <laughs> well on um 
like I said, I've seen special friends or like play uh, last year. And I think that, and you sing in French and English. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's because I have this thing where, you know, I, I'm naturally more, it's, it's easier for me to write in English, but since I live here and I do speak in French all the time and on a daily basis, I actually don't have that many uh, English speaking friends here. Um, yeah. And I don't know, it's just like when I see French bands singing in English, I just think that like it's too bad because I I mean I wish I could write every song in French but it's it, yeah more difficult for me so but I don't know I kind of on the last record wanted to make it uh, a challenge of saying like you know we're gonna have some songs in French so we have three I wrote three and yeah. they're my favorite I think <laughs> <laughs> well I, I did get a copy of this CD this one here yeah, and I've noticed that uh, you sign you sign my CD with sort of like a cat. I don't know if that's the one the cat that you've got, but yeah. um, I mean, obviously, you don't sign like official <laughs> documents like this. <laughs> that's like how I sign all my stuff, like my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. But on Discogs, I've noticed that um, there's an alias there for you. Your Discogs entry is like oh. every cat. Ah yeah. yeah, I mean I'm definitely I'm definitely a cat lady. I have well, I have my cat here that you saw. <laughs> um, and I don't I think it, it was just a nickname that a friend of mine's younger sister probably it's probably like ten years ago or something. She called me Air Cat, and so everybody <laughs> calls me Air Cat because I do really like cats and I like to draw a lot and I always draw a lot of animals and a lot of the artwork too with special friend is like cats. You can see like. I made the sticker. It's kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful that. But it's it's like, do you also release music as Ari Cat? Oh no, but I mean, I think during COVID, I tried making some demos where I had it under my name as Ari Cat, and yeah, I have like maybe I can't remember. I think it's like two songs in like these like COVID compilations, but that's it. Otherwise, I'm oh. I'm Erica Eric Cat. Yeah, oh. so it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not something that you're going to sort like be pursuing as a solo, so like a solo. No, and I think even if I did have a solo project, it would have a different name. There we go. There's another uh, band there. Maybe it's one of the four bands that you're in. Um, a band called Hobby. Oh, but that's no, so that's one that I used to play in a long time ago. So that's not one of the current bands, but so I guess we could right. technically say that I've been in five bands. Yeah. 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 So you, you played keyboards in that band or you just yeah. like. Okay. okay. <laughs> actually, now you're like reminding me, I actually do have a previous, <laughs> some previous other band experiences I kind of forgot about. Yeah. Same with Guillaume too. He had this, um, he has this other band called Young Like Old Men. It's this, uh, he has another bandmate that had a solo project uh, and I was playing keyboard in that one too, but then also playing keyboard in Hobby, yeah. Yeah, so this was like, so you weren't a drummer at the time? No, or this were you was, like, yeah. no, actually, actually you're right, oh, this might have been before Special Friend, yeah, this was, <laughs> this was a very brief, a very brief uh, musical experience that I had with some friends of mine and yeah. Yeah. Actually, there's another band there called Eggs as well, but I don't know if you. Yes. So you were you part of that? Um, yeah. It seems like it's like a is it like um like a collaboration or something? Is it like a, uh, a small, what do you call it? Yeah. Like so Eggs. Movie? It's funny. Yeah. It's, it's run by this French man named Charles, who used to play in a band called Juju Jaguar. And he kind of changed. It used to be kind of a garage rock band. And then he had this new project that became a bit more like indie pop. And originally, I think they were maybe five. And they released an EP and some singles. And then he had this ambition of just wanting to keep growing and adding people. And so I don't know if you know this band called En Attendant Anna, which is this French band that um, released an album recently on Trouble in Mind. And they also, oh. toured, they also, toured, I think they toured kind of extensively in the UK recently. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the singer of this band, she used to do some backup vocals in Eggs with the the girl who's playing trumpet in Ana Tondona. She's playing saxophone in Eggs. But then they released their album and they got too busy. And Charles asked if mm -hmm. I could replace Margot. Yeah, yeah. So I, 
was doing backup vocals and playing very, very minimal guitar, like three notes in eggs. Um, <laughs> I think I, and I, it was just, for me originally, I thought I was just gonna go on tour with them last year. Uh, yeah. But ever, like since then, uh, I've been kind of with them as a consistent member and uh, he just recorded an album where this time like they're, they're feature featuring my vocals on this one because like the previous albums of eggs it's margo singing yeah yeah the one that's going to be released in september also on uh prefect records i don't know if you know this label yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah prefect will be releasing eggs's next album this fall and yeah so i'm singing yeah. on that one so you're really very, very busy. So this is not like it's really busy. Busy. <laughs> So what are the other sort of like three bands that uh, maybe haven't been included on this concept? And yeah. are they all like indie pop bands? No, well, most, mostly so yeah, so special friend and then dog park, the one where we're like musical chairs, it's still quite like indie pop. Yeah. Uh, and then Eggs, very, very twee indie pop. But then I have this fourth band called School, where I'm playing bass, and it's a bit more shoegazy. And oh, I really, 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 really love playing bass in this band. And I'm really excited that we start playing some gigs with them. But yeah, yeah. There's, not, there's nothing released yet, but hopefully soon. We made a little video that will be coming out hopefully soon. Yeah, dog park. You said it's cool. Oh no! So <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> I, need to, I need to like draw draw a map of it. Uh, so school is the one where I'm playing only bass. The shoegaze band. Yeah, school. Dog, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Dog park though is the one that um, where I'm also playing bass and drums, guitar, keyboard, and where like. A and four, the, yeah, those are yeah. <laughs> That's the this is the band that I that we started maybe like a year and a half ago, and we're releasing an album with them uh april 19th yeah so this one's coming out really soon yeah so, yeah yeah because it's it's next month so like yeah. uh, you're releasing okay all right yeah and yeah. um we have like we've only released two songs with this band uh last year and yeah which like was nice because we didn't have an album but it allowed us to start being able already to play like some pretty big concerts like i'm actually still trying to comprehend like how and why like we were invited to play some of the things that we did with so little like we didn't even have an ep with just two, two songs like we played at like the uh, louis vuitton foundation we played like at the most expensive like campsite in france like in Saint -Tropez, Saint -Tropez. um like in this crazy rich place it was yeah it's insane but <laughs> so what do you say then that would you say that it's a good idea that you moved to Paris and so like left America? Honestly, like I'm saying, it's just it's the the random, you know, it's like those choose your own adventure books. You know, it's like I could have yeah. been Costa Rica and I would have been a botanist, but I ended up in the south of France and then in the west coast of France in Paris and then in a band and now I'm in four bands and I don't know what my life will be like later though. Who knows? I'm somewhere else and stuff. But I think music will always be. A part of my life now it's like yeah, the, yeah obviously you can tell if i'm in four bands now it's like i need to be busy <laughs> I, I enjoy it sometimes it's stressful but i really like i'd rather be busy than not have anything to do you of know? course yeah 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 well what if it's not like there's a festival in all four bands that you're in so oh, like uh, play in that festival. <laughs> No, you'd be really, really tired by the end of it. Be like, <laughs> Actually, it's funny because there we are playing a concert. What day is it today? We're playing a concert it's March nineteenth, and it's and it's going to be with Eggs and Special Friends. So I am going to be playing twice. Oh. At this oh, right. It's funny because the girl who booked that gig, she didn't know that I was playing in Eggs. So I was like, <laughs> oh, oh is it? but it's okay because. Yeah, I'm because I'm drumming in Special Friend, but in Eggs I'm just doing kind of backup vocals, so it's not it's not exhausting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, before we um, came on live, um, you mentioned that you live uh, in the place where it's near the cemetery where Jim Morrison was so like buried. Yeah. So can you tell us more about, 
about that place because it, it's it's one of those sort of like tourist attractions. I mean, yeah. I know it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that because it's like a sacred place. But <laughs> it's funny because it depends on how you see it. Because you know there are different cultures that see death differently. Like think about it in Mexico, you have like Dia de los Muertos, where you know people feel like celebrate in grave sites and party. <laughs> Whereas yeah. Yeah, Pelaches uh, is a very famous cemetery where you have like Oscar Wilde, Jim Morrison, uh, Guillaume Apollinaire, who's like this poet. You have a lot of famous people buried in a cemetery in these above ground uh, tombs. And I mean, yeah. it's it's a place where people casually go walk around. You see it's, you know, there's always lots of people, tourists. I don't know if you're allowed to take photos, but people do it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I live near there. <laughs> I, don't go, I don't go that often, but sometimes, you know, I might, I could cut through it to get from one place to the other. It's really beautiful. I think yeah, if yeah. you're a tourist in Paris, you should absolutely go visit Père Lachaise. Yeah, it's, it's one of those places that I'm hoping. So, like, I have been to Paris, but it's like a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I think now it's become even more expensive because I remember it being expensive at the time. Mm -hmm. but. I think just flights to Paris, I think, has gone up as well. <laughs> I mean, because where, where are you living? Uh, Stockport <laughs> in, in Manchester. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's just because I, I feel like there's some cheap flights, but you have the Eurostar, but the Eurostar is really expensive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because um, yeah, I have sort like you know the obligatory photograph in front of um, the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how how near are you from from there so do you go there often or no, I, I live so far from the eiffel tower and i don't even remember the last no i mean i can see it from like the place where i work but i yeah. no i live i think it's far i, I it's not in my neighborhood no. <laughs> I actually, I think if, you think, if you think about paris paris is this big circle that's split in half by la seine the river that runs through the city and so you have the north the south and i'm more in the north part of paris where a lot of like the music venues are at and where oh. um i feel like it's where the more affordable neighborhoods are as well like oh. i feel like I'm in a pretty affordable neighborhood and the more south you go is kind of like where all the more touristy things are like yeah, yeah la, la sorbonne um Notre Dame and eiffel tower are kind of like the the rich uh, expensive neighborhoods where, that I never go to. <laughs> yeah, but I know. I know that when you're a tourist, you you have to go see it. But. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's like uh, I remember going there. It was like in the '90s, the last time I was there. I think it was no, no, uh, 2000. I think when the last time I was there. It's just so like you just drive through it and maybe take the metro and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to go so like go to Paris again for a gig or something. Well, yeah, let, hopefully, me, let me yeah. know when you're here. I'll bring it up yeah. <laughs> to, the, to the the affordable cheap places. The affordable <laughs> wine. I, I, I got some good addresses. So. Yeah. Well, uh, indie pop is actually big in Paris. Yeah, and, um, yeah. They, the they first. yeah that's right yeah yeah um is there any sort of, like the genre that's very popular in in paris apart from indie pop or, i think uh, that there is a genre and a scene for everything um there's a lot of them that i probably just don't know about i think also french rap is big oh yeah yeah uh, people are really into pop there's a hardcore scene uh there's everything here, but I, yeah, I guess I'm more in the kind of little pop scene, but sometimes I go to some other gigs. Yeah. Like some is, is that really, is that really your genre of choice or you got into the indie pop scene because you formed a band with Giam or? <laughs> no, no, no. I, like, I mean, it's the both. It's like, some, I mean, obviously it's what I love. It's what I'm, because otherwise I wouldn't be doing, I would never play something if I wasn't, if I wasn't yeah. enjoying, which I've tried, you know, some other. Yeah, because you, know, you, know. you mentioned earlier when you were a teenager, you were so like the mosh pit, and it was so, like the only, I mean, you can't do mosh pit, <laughs> like in, in special wish, friends. I song. wish somebody would mosh at a special friend show. Like, <laughs> and it's funny that you say that because our music is very calm, but sometimes you know, can yeah. get a little bit, you know, 
<laughs> moody. But I think <laughs> it's happened very rarely where somebody's dancing at a special friend show and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think as a kid, like I used to be kind of into, like I was into a lot of things, like yeah. But also, yeah, some punk stuff, some some emo stuff, like a lot of kids are. But then I don't know. I think as I got older, it's like I really do like singing, and I really like singing pop, and it's what I'm comfortable doing. Um, yeah. I really, really like shoegaze. <laughs> that's, oh. why, that's why I like being in this new band because it's like something that you know I kind of been wanting to play in something maybe other shoegaze or even maybe something more like heavy you know yeah, yeah. I don't think I have time now for a fifth band but if I were to be in a fifth <laughs> band I think I want to play in something a bit more like upset <laughs> you know, but maybe, maybe not as a drummer because I'm not a, I'm, I'm not like a really crazy heavy I mean I could try <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if you, do, you know like black friend friend and special friend or something. Yeah. <laughs> but in, on your so like um um description though it, it does say noise. Yeah. In yeah. people noise. I, so I think uh, the noise comes a lot of from Guillaume <laughs> with the <gizmo> <laughs> <laughs> Um but sometimes I don't know I think that you know I try to do weird things on the drums where but I wouldn't say that the noise is coming from me. I think it's Guillaume. <laughs> I mean I'm <laughs> I'm making noise, but I don't know, if, like you know, in the genre sense. But. Yeah, yeah. So you're um the label mates with Swansea Sound. So are you still on the uh, Skatbox? Yeah, that... we, yeah. We released our last record. Oh, so I love this story. So special friend, we played at the Paris Pop Fest, and um, so I am a fan of well, Guillaume too. Are fans of you know some of these Sarah Records bands? Yeah. And so they're um. Oh my God, sorry. I'm like having a brain lapse. Um, we played with Secret Shine at the Paris Pop Fest and I was super happy about it. And, you know, we got to talk with them backstage and they really loved our set. And I felt comfortable reaching out to them again. And I contacted uh, Catherine from Secret Shine at the time where like we were looking for maybe a co-label. I think like, again, I'm kind of in this thing of like, we released our first EP and our first album on a bunch of French labels yeah and I felt like the next step I really wanted to collaborate with uh, a non-French label and the UK is close and again there's a scene for it I feel like for what we do yeah so yeah, yeah to Catherine who was saying that oh well you know we have uh, our friends at you know Rob uh and Amelia from you know Heavenly who have this, yeah. <laughs> have this label called Skeplex and like I could send them your record and so I mean I was like yes please and it was, it was such a insane thing that they actually responded positively saying yeah like let's have a let's have a, vi a video chat to talk about it and i remember when we had our first encounter with them it was kind of this situation you know we did a little you know video thing with like me guillaume and like our french labels and with rob and amelia and i was like taking photos of my screen with my phone being like, oh, God, what is happening? <laughs> And so, yeah, yeah. And, we're so, and we're so lucky because, again, I think that it really allowed us to, you know, have, you know, for example, to have our first little UK tour with them. Like, we're not that well known outside of France. So we got to open for them and we got to play at Rough Trade in Bristol. We got to play in Manchester. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so yeah. Amelia is like the queen of indie pop, isn't it? She <laughs> is. <laughs> and like, can you think about like how cool it is for us to be on tour with them and like after the gigs like I think there was one where we went back we were staying in the same house together you know just coming back around midnight and having like toast and peanut butter drinking yeah. tea and I'm like this is so cute <laughs> I had such an amazing time it was wonderful they're such lovely people I <laughs> Yeah. You know, it wasn't like one of those party tours. It was really like a very wholesome, like fam like family tour. You know, we were being hosted in yeah. homes. We were like, you know. Yeah. It's not like sex and drugs and rock and roll or something. No, this is like <laughs> hosting tea and going to bed early and I love it. <laughs> oh, I wish we could tour with them again. Yeah, well hopefully, you know, if you're so like because they yeah, because they're really very busy as well. I mean, it's like, yeah, you, you see lots of gigs at Swansea. Yeah, and, 
there's lots of gigs with Swansea Sound, and I saw that uh, there are some heavenly gigs that have been scheduled. And yeah. I know we're playing in Paris in May. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna hopefully try to. Well, hopefully for next year, because I think um, I mean all the uh, the lineup is already full for Glasgow's pop. Oh so yeah. Hopefully, hopefully next year, you know, especially if you're playing in Glasgow, maybe the organizers of Glasgow's pop so could be well go and see you and then yeah fingers crossed fingers oh, crossed you know i, I think it would be as well yeah 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 have you heard you have you have heard of glasgow's pop and i've never it? been but i've heard many good things about it and i have friends yeah. about it and i would like to go i have to check yeah. to if i have if I'm free, if I'm not scheduled to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, this year, th this year is really amazing because, uh, I mean, Amelia goes there. So, like, they've done it twice already. And the yeah. first, yeah, they played. And then, uh, and every time I see her there, it's like, oh, God, it's like, <laughs> this is what an indie pop like, festival looks like if Amelia yeah. Fletcher is there. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um well we're really looking forward to sort of, like your tour uh this no sorry this year right mm -hmm. september yeah. september this year How was the, like, oh, bit, end of so. september early october we will be coming back yeah for i don't know if i have them written somewhere yeah but, uh, we are hopefully playing yeah london exeter chelmsford coventry Yes, Manchester. Any Manchester Day? Uh, I hope so. Oh, you no, know, last time <laughs> or we were in yeah, Manchester. or Liverpool. Yeah. Oh, there is Liverpool. Yeah. Brilliant. I know that last time we played in Manchester, the the organizer came up to us and was saying, "If you guys ever want to play again, like, let us know." So I think that yeah. could happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, what are these places? Yeah, London. Yeah, there's Liverpool, uh, Glasgow. I think he's trying. Well, our book is still trying to get us some gigs. So if anybody's watching this and they want to, yeah. <laughs> well, the Talleyrand is fantastic. I really love that venue. It's, it's really it's, cute. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also so sort of like I'd say local because yeah, uh, I live yeah. in Stockport. It's just sort of like not far from the Talleyrand, so <laughs> it's really good. Um, there is this question that I wanted to ask. Um, I, I mean. I shouldn't really do it because a drummer is a drummer. It doesn't really matter whether it's like a, a male, there's no male or female drummer. Yeah. But I always, I always thought like, um, find it fascinating whenever I see sort of like a female drummer when I go to a gig. Yeah. Is it harder for girls or for females so like to become a drummer? Because I mean, you can still say that majority of drummers are like male <laughs> well, I feel like a lot, we can still say that a majority of musicians are male and i think that it's, yes I mean, it's, yeah. I mean it's it's kind of hard for me to say because i feel like you know I, I think for me i've always had this sort of mindset that if i want to do something i'll just do it and i don't care and i don't really feel like intimidated by the fact like oh am i not capable of doing this because i'm a woman but i know that this is yeah. you know an issue for a lot of for a lot of women who maybe feel like i don't have a place you know, in the music scene because it's dominated by men, patriarchy. Yeah. But I think that, I mean, this is what's kind of special in Paris is that there is this sort of movement of, you know, more women on stage. And there are, there are some um, organizations, um, like these collectives of women who are organizing workshops. Um, I'll name drop it. There's ones called like Salut les Ziquettes where basically they just open it up to a day where, you know, anybody who has no experience can come in and like play around on whatever they want. And I think for like a few days, they're like yeah. being also accompanied by other women musicians. And uh, a lot of bands have been formed out of this and some of them are still playing today. And I think it's really, really great that that's happening. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Sorry, what's it, what's it called? It's called Salut Les Ziquettes, which is oh, kind of- it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Like, le, girl musicians and okay. I, know, I know that they do have a special edition one that's just for drummers as well and i've been wanting to participate in this too just to you know see if if i can try, like show i don't teach anything but also learn some other things too because i'm still learning things you know yeah yeah um, yeah but yeah i mean i didn't plan this but you know last friday was uh, international women's day hmm. it was all like thinking 
I'm so glad that you're the worst part, like guesting yeah. on this this episode because it's like um, I've actually got a month. I think it was. I think it's in July or June where the guests are all sort of like female drummers. I'm really yeah. happy for it, but um, I don't see. I mean, like majority of the drummers I see are male. Yeah, yeah. they're all sort of like male drummers. So, <laughs> so <laughs> but hopefully there'll be more. Yeah, you're right. And it, it's it, it's true. There is something I think that's quite special when you do see a woman in a band. Like, for example, uh, when I was looking at your page, because I was like, I want to watch some of these videos. And, you know, I saw you had the drummer from the Gobi Tweens. And, like, immediately, like, that was the one that I wanted to watch, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking of, like, recently I saw uh, A Savage, who's the guy from Pocket Courts who played. And he was, he had this drummer that was just really really amazing she's this female drummer who's also singing and i don't know there's like yeah this like special sort of thing when you see i guess uh yeah it's like wow it's like <laughs> an alien <laughs> yeah. do, you, women, do you go to a lot of gigs in in paris or yeah my you? i feel like my only social life is probably through music <laughs> i spend i do spend a lot of time at home like painting drawing uh doing a lot of like creative stuff but yeah yeah every time i go out to go you know it's either for a band practice or to go see a gig probably yeah yeah or and have you, of course you're the one who would do all the uh, the merch for the bands as well yeah yeah the, yeah uh, for example I'm, I'm going i'm going to a gig tonight i'm gonna go see dive i don't know oh, right. yeah it, yeah is that a french band or something well they're they're american the American, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and when you go to a gig, um, now that you're actually so sort of like a drummer, do you look at the drummer and then sort of like watch them and see how? They <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it, it, it really depends because I, I think like since you know I kind of see music globally, you know, you're just kind of there taking everything in. But I think in those particular moments, for example, if there's a female drummer or if there's just some crazy insane drummer like i will pay attention to drums like i saw deer hoof recently and i and i know i wasn't the only one we were i was like with my friends and we were all watching the gig being like oh the drummer is so amazing and like those are like one of those special gigs where like you're really kind of fascinated by you know by the drummer yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. To watch. you just focus on <laughs> Which is sometimes, I mean, I, I do it quite a lot when I go to a gig out to sort of like make sure that I position myself where I can see the drummer. Oh, and, cute. It, <laughs> and sometimes so sort of like, right, I need to look at the singer as well. <laughs> not like not just yeah. the drummer. <laughs> yeah, but um okay, so well it's it's nearly sort of like um it's quarter to three now, but I've still got sort of like a few questions that I always sort of like a um, I asked the guests. Um, so one of them is, um, do you, I, I'm not seeing you, but do you twirl? Do you do twirl sticks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but it, you know, it has happened, I think, once where I dropped a drumstick. And so I, like, had to go try to catch it. And it somehow started, like, twirling in my hand. And it was, like, the most, best, like, thing that I probably have done on stage. <laughs> It, it was really improvised, and I think everybody was like, "Yeah," and then like got it back, and then it's you know, then I kept playing. But no, I can't really twirl, and I I mean, have my drumsticks here, but I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna fail miserably. So it's not something that you saw like you want to incorporate in your sort of like drumming. I wish <laughs> I wish I knew how to do it. I think it's I think it's funny, but I can't I can't do it. I haven't been no. able to do that yet. No. Yeah, but well, I suppose so. Like if you're playing indie pop, I don't know. Maybe uh, I've had sort of like uh, indie pop band drummers. <laughs> that the, uh, most of them don't do the uh, the twirling. Not twirls, yeah. <laughs> I don't think um, Ian Button from uh, from Swansea Sound. I don't think he does it either. <laughs> I think if he did, I think it would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's brilliant, Ian Button. I really, I really like him. Um, what about drumming heroes? Oh, yeah. So it's funny because I knew that this question would be asked and I was like kind of stressing out about it, being like, who could I mention? And honestly, I think that, you know, when we talk about Special Friend and when it started, like we were both huge Yola Tango fans. And oh. it's 
you know, I feel like we also we get compared to Yola Tango all the time. And I even feel vocally yeah. that my voice is similar to Georgia Hubley. And it's just, you know, she's also one of those examples of a female drummer who's singing and drumming at the same time and also playing softly, yeah. but playing, you know, beautifully. And I don't know, I think she's probably a drumming legend. And it's funny because I've been asked recently by this French journalist who's trying to set up an interview between both of us it's not confirmed yet but i'm oh wow i don't know what i'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but they're still they're still touring right they're still yeah I, mean, I saw i saw them for the first time at this french festival called la route du rock last summer mm -hmm. and it was it was so good it was amazing yeah they're yeah. still playing and I, I don't know if they're coming back but they might be touring in the u.s I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They just released. They just released an album uh, last oh, year. Really? Yeah. I should look them up and so. Like, <laughs> I mean, I have heard of the band. You but should I'm not interview really... her if she is global. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm so like. I think I don't know. Maybe uh, it, they're considered new wave, but I'm not sure because I have heard of the band, but I haven't actually so sort of, like got into the music. Mm. Yeah, because there's just loads, so like listen to them, yeah. <laughs> and unless I actually go and see them live, yeah, and then yeah, so yes, definitely I will, I will look them up and uh, listen to some of the um, yeah, and like maybe try to look up some live videos too, and yeah, it's very sweet. Yeah, also. yeah. So um, so any anybody else who is all like uh, that you liked or. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like I mentioned, uh, Deerhoof drummer is insane. I know that's the type of drumming I could never do. <laughs> I can never be capable of <laughs> sort of craziness. But I, don't, I think it's funny, too, because like when I first started playing, you know, the whole idea was you're going to be playing very simple, simple drum patterns. And I think, uh, I mean, I don't know his name, but the drummer of like whoever's drumming in Beat Happening, you know, uh, oh. you know these very like, you know, simple kind of not tight you know it's kind of yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. sometimes you know a bit chaotic but yeah that was like something that i guess kind of inspired me in the beginning where i was telling myself oh well you know if you can get away doing that like i can you know I'm maybe not yeah. i mean i've tried practicing to a click you know to try to be like a tight drummer but in the beginning it was really difficult like i'd speed up all the time i'd slow down uh, i think it drove guillaume crazy because you know he has to <laughs> follow whatever you know <laughs> he said um and like, I still have this problem today too, where sometimes I'll like click my sticks and then I'll start playing and it won't be the same thing as like, the <laughs> <laughs> so just, uh, you know, just have to trust. The <laughs> yeah. So it's not the usual. So like most, most drummers that I've interviewed you know, that's been on the show, they always say like John Bonham or yeah. So it's, so it's, it's not. No. maybe you're too young so like uh, i don't know yeah i think and also because like i said like when i i mean i've always just been into music and into bands yeah and yeah. since you know I, I wasn't like dreaming of being a drummer my whole life it just kind of happened so i think that you know yeah, like, yeah. they say like i didn't necessarily have like a favorite drummer but i mean i think since i've been drumming it has been you know something like i said i do pay more attention to now um, yeah yeah and but what would you say then that it's would you say that it's easy for anyone that anyone can become a drummer? I mean, or... I don't know because I know some people. It's hard for them to coordinate, you know, between like <laughs> That's me. Your arms and your legs. I don't yeah. know. For me, I mean, I do simple drumming, so it's easy. <laughs> I think it was easy to start because it's quite. I mean, like I said, I think there's this sort of intuition-based thing where it's like you know you don't necessarily have to be. You know figuring out if you're playing like the right chords or you know you're just yeah. kind of like i don't know, you kind of like feel it you know it's very yeah, but it's not just the arms though it's the legs as well <laughs> yeah. so, so... <laughs> have you have you have you tried drumming i have so like had crash lessons on drumming because uh, when i was in, living in the uae in the middle east yeah. there's this american guys who sort of like wanted to form a band and they said to me, learn how to play the drum so you can be a drummer. So it was because you know, they, they thought it would be cool to have a female drummer in their yeah. band. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to the Philippines. I'm going home for a holiday. I'll try to learn it. And then when I get back, when I get back here, <laughs> we can form a band. Mm -hmm. But I tried it. Um, I think I just thought like, I just love watching drummers. So mm -hmm. 
but I can't, I couldn't tell, like, really concentrate because when he was teaching me, I just saw, yeah. like, I kept saying to him, oh, can you do that again, please? Can you do that again? I think it's already time's up. <laughs> you know, it's like... well, the, the thing is, so this is why, like, I tried, like, one, no, maybe it was like one or two times with an actual drum, like, professor, teacher. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, I'd already been starting to trying to learn drums by myself, but I figured, okay, well, if I want to, you know, become a better drummer, maybe I should try to take a lesson and see. And yes. this is the first time where, you know, they sat me down, I had to read, like, the sheet music, and it was just so terrible. Like, I hated it, and I didn't want to do it, even though I figured that I feel like a lot of people probably can learn this way. You know? Yeah, yeah. But I just didn't, I don't know, maybe I didn't like being told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, you know, having to really follow something where it's like, this is what, you know, you have to, it was like, you can see in Special Friend, like, sometimes, you know, I, I'll be playing, like, only on, like, the toms, and I won't be, you know, I just get to do whatever I want, and Guillaume is happy that I'm doing weird stuff, and so, <laughs> yeah, it's just intuition-based for yeah, yeah. Style that I'm doing, but I know that the style that I do wouldn't work maybe for someone else's band. This is why sometimes I'm not even sure I consider myself an actual drummer. I'm like a special friend drummer. Even though I drum a little bit in Dog Park, I still feel like, you know, if somebody was like really looking to hire a drummer for their new band and like have to learn all the parts, I don't know if I would be the right person for that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, Aiden just said that uh, it's interesting to hear about the live music scene in Paris. Uh, it's Right. Je, je parle français. <laughs> he speaks French, but I don't. So hopefully I said that correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um. So um. What about um disasters? Have you had? Because you know you said that you're only you only do like simple drumming things. But have yeah. you ever had sort of like a what I call an accident or a drumming disaster? Oh, of course, and they're terrible. They're <laughs> Because I don't know if, if you remember, but so in Special Friend, you know, we're a duo, but we're kind of have a secret third member. It's Guillaume's loop pedal. And so a lot of times what happens is when we're getting into those moments where he's going to start recording guitar on the loop, I have to be super focused and trying to play as tight as possible. And then he'll start recording and then he'll like launch the pedal. And then all of a sudden I become kind of the one that needs to follow the looper. And so then he'll start playing guitar solos on top of it. And if like for some reason the sound like I can't hear or like maybe his his solos are too loud and I can't hear like the loop anymore. Yeah. Sometimes like we can get out of sync and then it's the worst feeling because you can hear it, you can feel it. And all of a sudden I'm like lost in the song and it's happened. Very, it has happened live during some concerts in sometimes in some big, some big places. <laughs> and in those moments, Basically, what I have to do is like I have to stop. He'll usually stop, and then we'll have we'll hear like the loop still playing, and then I'll try to get back on it. And it's, I feel like, it's maybe for the audience. I don't know if it's that noticeable because you might think, oh, maybe like that's part of the song. They're doing it on purpose. Yeah. But for me, it's 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 like the most gut wrenching, horrible nightmare that can happen. And it just becomes such a part of our set, though. Like you know, we have to we have to do it. You know, unless unless we hire a third guitarist, but. <laughs> Yeah, well, I remember. Sorry, pardon? Oh, no, I was going to say, so that's usually like the biggest disaster. And I think the other times is like sometimes you can feel like the drum set kind of inching away from you because maybe it's not like really set. Yeah. Like yeah, playing, yeah. I can feel like my leg getting far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I remember at the Talleyrand gig, I think you had a bit of a sort of like technical problem oh. there as well because um, then, then so sort of like you had to change um, guitar or something. And uh, I think Rob, Rob saw oh, like I don't know. It was all like, and then there was uh, like a false start. I think. And then, oh my god! You know, I don't remember. At, you were looking at each other, and you were like, <laughs> "Maybe I'm so traumatized. I don't remember." I don't, I don't remember. The thing that I do remember about the Manchester gig, though, is that the stage was really shaky, and so when I was playing, I, I felt like I, you know maybe I'm gonna like fall through the stage. <laughs> At some point. And it was like kind of you know small in a little corner and like since yeah. I'm singing like it was like hard to kind of get the mic, you know, adjusted in the right corner. But yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I don't remember what happened. Did he break? No. The <laughs> well, I mean that was just sort of like the two of you. Imagine it was like five of them, Swansea Sound on the stage, yeah. and Old Hippo as well. Old Hippo, there were like six of them on the stage, this tiny stage. I don't know how they yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but no, that was a really, really good gig. I really enjoyed that gig. So, um, right, last question is um, advice to uh, drummers or uh, aspiring drummers, aspiring oh, musicians in general. So, <laughs> oh, cute. you know, this is funny because you know, saying you know, do you have this feeling of being like a female drummer or whatever? And I feel like I, there's this phenomenon that happens sometimes is when I'm, you know, after a gig, I'll be at the merch table and somebody will come over with their little children. And I think it's the cutest thing ever. And actually next week with me and Guillaume, we're playing, we're going to Toulouse in the south of France and yeah. we're playing a concert, but we're also participating in a workshop where we're going to be in a school, um, kind of introducing ourselves and just, you know, showing like young kids, like, look, a little rock band. And, um, yeah, yeah. and I think it's super sweet, probably, you know, for a young child and maybe also for like a little little girl to be like oh look there's you know there's this girl drummer like I could do that and I, I don't know I think that maybe even just like seeing people do it is inspiring and I think that maybe I'm just a good example also of somebody who who learned late you know I, I haven't been drumming since I was a kid and I just yeah. decided one day okay you know I want to do this okay I'm gonna start drumming and then now I'm in a band we record stuff we put out albums we're playing concerts and like you really want to do something it sounds so cliche but if you really want to do something I feel like you can do it but you have to take the steps to do it and you have to practice a lot it can't just yeah. you know because I have some friends who are like who sometimes say that you know they would like to maybe learn how to play the guitar it's like okay if you want to learn to play the guitar you need to you need to practice you have to yeah, <laughs> it's the same. With, it's the same with me. I wanted to, I wanted to learn how to play the drums, but I don't. So like, I'm just. I think I'm just too lazy to do it. I'd rather just go to a gig and watch the drummers, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and just love the drummers, and that that's all I want to do <laughs> instead of me doing it. Yeah. But I think it's also good for kids because one thing I've noticed about you, especially the merch, is loads of cute things. Yeah, I love drawing. <laughs> I'm trying to think. So um, I made some new. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, I already showed you the cat sticker. I'm trying to think. If I had to turn my computer around, you can see like on my wall, I have a bunch of drawings oh, wow. of like animals and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. I, th I think that my art style is very uh, kid friendly. Yeah. <laughs> people like people like cute things. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, I think that's the reason why I thought you were like Japanese. It was all like, I don't know what came, I don't know what made me think that you're like Japanese American. Maybe it's because I like like really like kawaii cute stuff. Oh yeah. Oh no, I remember. I think it's because I had um I had Jigglypuff um badge on. My, <laughs> I had a Jigglypuff badge on my bag, and I think we talked about Jigglypuff. And I thought maybe. I think we did because Jigglypuff. I feel like if I was a Pokemon, maybe I would be Jigglypuff. Like, with a little <laughs> like putting people, everybody, putting people to sleep because you know, yeah, everybody the fun is very like calm and quiet. And I feel like a lot of our music is very. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Well, thank you so much, Erica, for saying yes to us. I really enjoyed chatting to you. But do you want to just sort like um just invite whoever's listening, or maybe you know our friends to sort like um. The tour that you're doing in Europe? Yeah. Yep. Wait, sorry, what did you want me to say? Do you want to just sort of like invite them and just sort of like say that you're doing a, you know, like a doing a tour, a special friend of doing a tour in yeah. Europe in April? Yeah. yeah, so in special friend, we are going on tour in Germany from April 19th through the 28th. And then we are playing the UK. Uh, end of September, early October, and we're also playing this festival in October in Rotterdam called Left of the Dial, which I have some friends who have played who have told me it's super amazing, kind of showcase for uh, kind of little bands. It's not like a huge yeah. festival, but apparently it's super fun. And I think that we'll have some other things that will come up. I know with Dog Park, we're releasing an album soon, and there's some things that haven't been announced yet, but I think it's going to be a very busy year. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. I think I need to... I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna be a very busy year for you. I know that Special Friends got a Facebook page. Uh, and all the other bands like Eggs and School and uh, Dog Park, uh, are they on Facebook? Uh, how 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 do they know how you know, like the latest uh, information about them? Yeah. So Special Friend Dog Park uh, have Facebook pages, and we're very. I'm very active on Instagram. I like to post a lot of stuff and I usually post very often, like when we have gigs, um, when we have like, we release new things. So actually we just released a new 
single on a Prefect Records compilation that literally just came out, I think, last week or a few days ago. Oh, yeah. Is that the one with Otto Kampa? It's like the compilation album with the Mount Mystery and Otto Kampa, I think. Yes, this record just arrived That's in, one. My, yes. in my yeah. home. And yeah. Yeah, we have a new song on this, and oh, brilliant. I, yeah. I should go listen to it and go buy a record off of Prefect Records Bandcamp. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, I remember so like seeing that it's on Bandcamp, and because uh, they did one before called Fourteen as well. Um, and there's actually a song by Eggs on that one too. I think on the the previous compilation. Previous one, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna include that. So I'm gonna include the link to that Bandcamp account so they can do it. Because I remember seeing it. Because Jack, who's the um, the one who does the uh, Taliban gigs, yeah, his band is Auto Camper, and they've got um single. They've, yeah, they've got one in there, and I remember so like seeing it. I thought, oh, special friend, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, no, <laughs> all right, well, a good one. There's a lot of good yeah. Content. But what's the best sort like? Where is it your Instagram account where you? Will um, find yeah, on like well, special special friend Facebook or Instagram, Instagram, Instagram account. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, and and because you talk about the other bands in there as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can send you the links. Uh, others we have we have email too. If people want to email, <laughs> it's just that I like so like putting links to where they can actually you know people can find yeah. out information about the bands and things. So I, I'll just I'll do that and then I'll do the band count thing as well. So. Okay, but thank you so much, Erica, and enjoy the gig tonight. Thank you. So <laughs> I'm so about it. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. Yeah. Well, hope to see you again soon. Hope to see yeah. you special let, again. Let me know yeah. if you're in Paris. September. Oh yeah, yeah. I will do. Um, well, thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the weekend. So you, you too. Yeah. Bye. See you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Oh, thank you, everyone. Oh god, she's absolutely amazing. I really love Erica. Um, yeah, so uh they're doing if you're in europe like strasbourg germany or um i think france as well so um do keep an eye out for their um dates a special friend uh, uh are touring in europe in april and if you're in the uk um they're doing like what erica said they're doing a, a tour in september so that's something to look forward to so anyways uh thank you all so much for joining us live i uh, really enjoyed that one i mean i wish i could talk like talk or oh, i wish i could speak french so i could say something to her in French as well. But anyway, so um, next week, uh, we're going to have another uh, amazing drummer. Uh, so please do keep an eye out for the guest announcement post and hope you'll join me again. But uh, for now, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, love music, love life, love, love, love drummers. They're absolutely amazing. So see you all again next week. Bye for now. Oh, happy Mother's Day as well. <laughs> happy Mother's Day to all the... Um, mums out there so yeah we'll see you all again next week bye for now bye